Hello, chemistry students. Your tutor, Jake, here. Welcome back to my channel. And we have another organic chemistry question. Here we have draw a stepwise mechanism for the following reaction. I have an alcohol reacting with hydrobromic acid to generate two separate new compounds, both containing a bromine. Now, the special case that we have going on right here is our alcohol also contains a double bond. This is an allylic alcohol. And we'll see how this is gonna come into play in our mechanism in one second. So let's go ahead and walk through. The first thing that I'm gonna do with any mechanism is I'm gonna draw out all of the bonds and all of the lone pairs. That way, I have a very clear idea of what's going on and how these electrons are flowing. And that's something that I always like to tell my students every single time, is draw all of your lone pairs. That way you can really have a good idea of what potentially else could happen. So moving forward through this mechanism, our oxygen is going to now react with the hydrogen on the hydrobromic acid, and the electrons between the hydrogen and bromine are going to push onto the bromine. Now, after we've added the hydrogen onto our structure, we'll have something that looks like so. With our oxygen now containing two hydrogens and only one lone pair. Whenever we have an oxygen containing only one lone pair, and three bonds, it's going to have a positive charge. And the electrons, when they pushed onto the bromine in the step above, also formed a bromide ion, a Br minus. And that is going to be the ion that we have that will charge balance. Now, any time that you can generate water on a structure, it's usually a good idea to have it behave as the leaving group, as we know water is very stable course. So in this case, I'm going to do just that. I'm going to break the carbon-oxygen bond right here to now generate water, which what do you know is one of our products here. So minus H2O. And let's take a look at the two products that we're going to form. So in this case, we will still have the structure that we've got right here with a positive charge where the water was. And now in this particular case, this is a primary allylic carbocation, which is going to be far more stable than a typical primary carbocation when we're thinking about just a regular carbocation. But in this particular case also, anytime you have a double bond right next door to a positive charge, the double bond is going to shift over and we're going to generate another resonance structure and be careful about which arrows you use for resonance structures. But now we'll have a terminal double bond. And in this case, we'll have a secondary allylic carbocation. And so in this case, Which of these two do you think is going to now be more stable, primary or secondary? Well, secondary, of course. Just like regular carbocations, the more carbons that are around any particular carbon, the more stable that product will be. So now, again, we have our bromide ion, the Br minus, that can potentially react with either of these structures. And so in the first case, I'm gonna draw all of my lone pairs once again. And we see that I can now, let's use a different color here, react this bromine to this, with the negative charge, with the positive charge on our structure. And that will lead to our first structure that we have right here this 1-bromo-but-2-ene. And then second structure that we have, again, that Br minus, our bromide ion, is going to react with that positive charge to now generate our second product. 
the three bromobutuanine. When you're going through these mechanistic type questions, one of the biggest, most important things that you can do is always identify what is your nucleophile and what is your electrophile. What has the electron density to get things started? The hardest part in these mechanisms is the first step. Once you can get that first step, you're gonna have a really easy time sort of going through the cascade to get to that final product. And last piece of advice when you're doing mechanisms, always keep the products in mind as you're pushing the electrons around. Sometimes as we get through cumbersome mechanisms, it can get a little bit easy to get lost in the sauce as far as all of the arrows that you're pushing around. So always take a look at that product to see what you're actually going to be forming. Hey chemistry students, your tutor Jake here. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions that you'd like me to solve here on this channel, be sure to comment below. We'll see you next time.